that is as you guys can tell very very clear they're very bright very clean flush mount OEM install <laughs> What is up guys, welcome back to the Taco Rick channel. I am barely in focus, but now I'm in focus. So, we're gonna be doing an install, and actually there's gonna be three different video installs that you're gonna see happen over the course of the next like week. Um, I'm doing three different installs today, and they're gonna be broken up into three different videos. But this is gonna be the first video that you guys see, and that is going to be installing OEM uh, tailgate bed lights on the taco. So before we get started here, why did I go with OEM versus like buying an LED glow kit or something and doing them on the inside of it? Uh, I really like the OEM look. I wanted to have OEM looking parts and I wanted it to look professional and legit as an OEM install like it came right from the factory that was the whole point of it so oem tail light markers that's what we're gonna be installing today first thing we gotta do is fold up that tonneau cover get access to the bed so that we can mount these once we mount them we can move on to wiring if you guys are wondering that is a gator aftermarket trifold tonneau cover love the thing pretty affordable and uh, pretty high quality. I have this. I had the same one on my Sierra, so uh, I really like this thing. It's linked in the description down below. All right, so now let's go over everything you're gonna need to do this install and everything that comes in the initial kit that you can buy off of Amazon, linked in the description down below for these OEM side markers. Well, not sure if they're OEM. They might be a Chinese knockoff of OEM, but they're close enough. So first thing, you get this right here, which this is your wire loom that's gonna go from the back of the truck all the way up to the front cab. This thing is way too long for what you really need. It's absolutely ridiculously long. Uh, not sure why, but uh, we're gonna be modifying this to be a little bit shorter. It also comes with the rubber grommet already hooked up to it. So we're, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be replacing a current rubber grommet that's already in the cab. We'll show you that later. If you guys wanna actually read through the instructions yourself, they're also linked in the description down below. Uh, for the instructions that Toyota gives you. Also in the kit, obviously, you get the two lights. You get your driver's side and you get your passenger side. You get a bunch of zip ties. You get two vampire clips, which is how we're going to power it. I'm probably only going to be using one, or I might just solder it, honestly. You get your four screws to secure this. You get the two back ends, which are for the waterproof couple connectors. You actually attach these to the wires after you feed the wires through the holes that we're gonna drill. Included in the instructions that I listed down below are these templates right here. These are your guides for drilling your holes. We're gonna be needing a 7 16 bit and a 7 64 bit for drilling. For the 7 16 hole, the one in the middle that we're gonna be feeding the cable through, I'm actually gonna be using the 7 64 to drill my pilot hole. I'm gonna expand it with a quarter inch and then I'm gonna do my 7 16 because this is fiberglass, so I wanna be careful. Along that line, we're gonna need a drill to obviously drill those holes. Then the rest of this is kinda of extra related to cutting these wires and making them shorter. If you wanna do it the way that I'm doing it, you're gonna probably need some heat wrap of some sort, a wire stripper, some crimp on connectors. I'm not sure which ones I'm gonna be using just yet. Some electrical tape might need that, some solder. A solder iron, a lighter to melt our heat shrink wrap if we need it, uh, wire cutters, and a utility knife. And you can't forget, you need yourself a Bluetooth speaker so you can play some music so you don't get bored while you're doing your install. Okay, so let's go up in the cab here and I will show you guys where we're going to be mounting these. And uh, we'll tape up our templates and we'll start drilling some holes. So up here in the bed of the truck, this right here is where we're going to be installing them. You got the metal portion of your bed right here and then you got where the fiberglass starts. We're going to be mounting it on this little kind of inward slanted piece. So you're going to take the driver's side uh, template and we're going to align it based on what we said right here. So it says to align the bottom edge with this crease down here and align the side edge with that side edge right there. You're going to tape down that template and then uh, we're going to drill some holes. vacuum if you're doing this like in your garage so you can vacuum up all the fiberglass also side note don't get it on your hands and also don't breathe in the fiberglass try to do this in a very stale air environment not like with a fan blowing because you don't want to inhale this stuff 
There's a little closer look at the holes we are drilling. Now we're going to move on to the other side. Here's a little bit of a closer look on this side. So you want to line up this bottom along this edge like it says right here and along this side edge. One little tip for you guys though when you're starting with your small drill bit hold down the, te the template as best you can if you didn't tape it as good. I barely taped it here but hold it down with one hand and just barely drill all three of those holes that way you have your initial starting point and then you can drill all the way through after that and as like you saw me do on the other side I actually took the template away so that it was a little bit easier to drill so these are kind of just like a here's your mark here's your mark here's your mark so you just take the drill and you little just do it like a little tap 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 while you're holding the template and then you can remove and drill all the way through fiberglass is super easy to drill through so you want to be very careful not to put any force on this at all just be very gentle with the drill because um, fiberglass is super easy to drill through and you don't want to push too far and then hit your metal on the other side it'll give you a spot that your truck could possibly start rusting you don't want to do that so I'm gonna drill these holes real quick and we'll be all good Holes are drilled, so now we want to move on to actually mounting up our lights. Very simple, the four screws that I talked about earlier are the four screws we're going to be using. You're going to want to use a screwdriver. I didn't include that, but you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver because you don't want to use a drill. Like I said, fiberglass is soft, so as soon as you screw in it with a drill, it's going to keep screwing. It's going to basically round out the hole, and you're going to have to go get a bigger screw, or you're, you're screwed. You're screwed. There you go. Right here on the rubber, it's labeled driver, and the other one says passenger. Driver would be your driver's side. Passenger would be a passenger side. First thing we're going to do is we're going to feed this wire through that 7 16 hole. Remember when I said this wire is like way too long? It is. So now we're going to be taking our screws and we're going to put them through there, line them up with our holes, and screw them in with a Phillips head screwdriver. Some side tips while doing this. You want to tighten it down, but you don't want to tighten it too far. Just like what I said with the drill, you don't want to round out these holes. So and I, a good way to do it is kind of to try and wiggle the light while you're screwing it on. If there's still wiggle, go further. Once you've got rid of all the wiggle and it's nice and firm on there, you're good to go. So now we're going to put the passenger side on, and then we're going to move on to the wiring portion, which is going to be the fun part. <laughs> So once you feed it through, this is underneath the back end here of the Tacoma, you're going to see the ball of wire right there. All you're going to do is just basically pull it and you get all of the slack. As you can see, there is a lot of slack. So now what you want to do is you see the hole right there, you're going to want to feed the wire through that hole and then feed it down through here so you follow the path of the original wire loom from the truck. So yeah, the goal is to follow along the line of the original wire loom for the truck until we get back here and then we're gonna be following this loom all the way up to the front of the truck, which I will trace out for you guys a little bit clearer here in a second. This right here is what we're trying to get to. We're basically going to run it down through those two holes and over here and we're doing the same thing on the other side and we're bringing it down over to this area as well. Then we will connect in to the main loom and then we'll connect into the main wire that's gonna to head to the front of the cab. As you can see now, the wire comes down, goes through that first pocket and then comes down around to here where we can follow now the wire loom. So this was kind of the part that I was talking about. Look at how long these wires are that are left over. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be now grabbing the main loom and kind of figure out where it's gonna go and how long these need to be so that I can cut them, crimp on these ends back on, and uh, be able to not have a lot of slack. Uh, we'll actually have no slack so it's nice and clean. So this right here was kind of what I was meaning. Look at how long these cables are here. That's way longer than what we need. We just need to get them to a central spot so we can plug them into this cable, which also, look at how long this cable is. That is way more than what you actually need. So what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be keeping these ends right here. I'm gonna figure out where I'm gonna mount them up underneath of here somewhere. And then I'm gonna figure out how long these need to be to get to there. And then we're going to be taking these ends right here, taking those crimp connectors off, and then uh, cutting the wire back wherever it needs to be, cutting the wire loom, cutting the guarding as well to the correct length so this is a nice clean install. A Little bit of extra effort, but it's gonna make it look a lot more OEM and a lot more professional.
Right here, I'm going to show you what I did. Basically, I ran it down. I did one tape here. I'm going to do another. But I brought it over and got it to a point where I'm basically going to plug it into here. And I just cut it off. So now I'm going to pull this back around. And I'm going to put those crimp connectors on these two ends so that we can plug it in here so it's all waterproof nice and tidy. I am going to do the same thing for the other side. It's a little bit longer of a distance, but I'm going to bring it over here, cut it, and then uh, bring the cord down and put the crimp connectors back on it. This right here is the main lead heading up to the front of the truck. Uh, we'll cut the, this link to link when we get to the front of the truck. Now I'm going to put the crimp connectors on this cable right here. Also, side note, if your truck's a little bit dirty, wear some safety glasses so that debris does not get in your eyes. Safety first. I changed my mind. Instead of trying to undo these little clips, undo the crimp connector, all I did was cut it off and all I'm going to be doing is using uh, crimp connectors. So I'm going to use some double-ended crimp connectors and crimp this end to the end down below and make things a little bit easier on myself. Alright, so there we go. I got, uh, right there is another black tape portion. Come down around and we're all hooked up and plugged in on this side. So now I'm going to move on to the other side. Alright. That is both of them hooked up. Got a little bit of slack there. Nice, cleanly done. So now we're gonna move on to the actual wiring of the harness. In fishing this wire up through the thing, the loom goes behind this post here. I had a super hard time getting it behind that post. I ended up having to use basically some wire as a pull through guide. So I bent the wire around there, got the wire around it, taped this uh, loom to it, and then pulled the loom through. Also, you can pull this back so you can actually have room, but that was a pain in the ass. Get used to it. That's going to be a pain in the ass to get around there. So now I'm just feeding this through around this post, and then I'm going to be moving to going up close to the cabin to where our grommet is, which is underneath here. Right there. You can see right there. There's the grommet that we're going to be getting. Also, highly recommend taking off this grommet that came on the loom already. Take that thing off. It makes feeding the cord through super hard. I already pulled out the grommet right here, but this right here is the grommet that went right here. You just pull it out and that's actually your carpet on the inside of your truck. So the grommet that they gave you already has the hole cut out so that you can put that up through there. So the next thing we got to do is go in the interior and kind of tear the interior a little bit apart so that we can get access to where we got to run our wires up to the front dash there. So I'm going to be removing these trim pieces. This is the back portion. It's very simple. You kind of just pry it up on a little bit and they pop right out. Very, very simple. So same thing here for the front one. You kind of just put a little bit of force along the whole thing. Nothing too crazy. And you can pop out the piece just like that. So that's where the loom is. So now all there is, there's a, there's a little thumb screw back there that I already took off. And then you should just be able to pop this off very easily as well. And right in there is the wiring that we're trying to get to. So going back to here, next thing we got to do is get this piece pulled out so that we can run the loom through here as well. To do that, you got to pop this off right here. This pops off pretty easily. You pop it off. And then we need to get a wrench and unscrew that so that way this panel can come out. So it's a little bit easier if you push the seat all the way forward. So now you just take a 14 millimeter ratchet and you undo it. All right, with that removed, now we can pull this panel off right here. There are some pretty heavy uh, body panel clips underneath this. So I'm going to be using uh, one of these right here. This is just a trim removal tool for automotives. And right there, you can see the body panel clips. There's one on uh, the other side as well. Um, be very gentle. Don't break those. Um, but it comes out pretty easily. So next thing, we got to pull this carpet up and get to the grommet, which is right about here. Not sure how well you guys can see it, but right down there is the hole that we're going to be fishing this wire through underneath right there so you can see the light shining through the grommet. So we're going to be fishing that wire up through that hole and bring it up here to the wire loom and then run it to the front. Alright, so there you guys go. The wire is fed through. There's actually a little bit of a channel. You can't make it out on video, but when you get it in here and do this, there's a channel for this wire to run because it is OEM install. That's how it's supposed to come. And right down there is the wire all done so I'm gonna have to tuck that wire tape it I guess into place now all we gotta do is run it up this wire loom to the front 
So there we go, right there is the wire, it runs up through. So we run it inside of the actual loom itself up to right here where we're gonna start wiring it in. Well, I got to that point on the install where I kinda got frustrated and stopped filming. Basically, soldered up, got everything connected up front, and when I plugged in, when I turned it on, one of the lights wasn't working. Long story short, don't use crimp connectors like we were using to button those up. Solder connections are the best way to do it. So basically, I took those crimp connectors that we used down below here when we were hooking up the lights. I took those out completely. I got some heat shrink wrap. I soldered the ends. I connected them, heat shrinked them back together, plugged them all in. Works perfectly fine now. So let me take you through, kind of show you uh, the front wiring because that's where we're at last. So as you can see right here are the two ends. I went through and actually soldered these together right here to the main ground wire. I also did the same thing here for this. There's a fuse right here, so I shortened the wire to right here so it's nice and clean. Still gonna put this in the loom and then tuck it all together. Then I vampired it in to the appropriate wire that they list online. So online they listed as this green wire on the very bottom. It's pin number 14. If you check the manual that's listed in the description down below, you can check that out and see it. They provided another vampire clip for the ground wire. I decided to just actually put a little crimp connector on here and attach it to that grounding bolt right there instead. Uh, that was a better option for me. That's a 10 millimeter bolt right there. So yeah, that bolt right there was a better option. So I just put a crimp connector with an O-ring on it and uh, put it around that ground lug. And that is also a soldered into the crimp connector there as well so it doesn't fall out. So that is the situation. So that is the situation up front. Let me take you down below to show you what I had to redo basically. So these pieces of crap suck, so I took all those out. It's kind of hard to focus in here, but you can kind of see where there's the heat shrink wrap. So these are now heat shrink wrapped, and then the electrical tape is just to hold the loom wiring, the plastic loom wire to it. Gotta just do a little bit of holding up the wire with some more electrical tape. But uh, as far as everything is concerned, the bed lights are on. They're nice and bright. The instructions have it wired so that these will turn on when your bed lights themselves turn on. So when those turn on, these turn on. Works out great. Sorry for the end of this video taking, getting a little quicker, but uh, I'm gonna button up everything because it is like eight o'clock right now and I, I still haven't ate dinner. So I'm gonna button up all of this stuff and I'll show you guys how it works at the very end here. Okay, uh, first off, apologize for the audio. It started to literally downpour. Well, let me first show you what the bed looks like without the lights, and I'll show you how it's all hooked up up front, and then uh, we'll turn them on. So right now in my garage, that is my bed, and you can, like, you can barely make out what's in there. Obviously, we got lights now, so it's gonna look better. Inside the truck, remember the grommet is underneath there. The wires are nice and clean underneath of all the trim work even up front you can't see any of the wires because they're all underneath of the stock loom wiring all we have to do is right here on the door switch so with the bed lights you can have it set to door or just on permanently so I always have it on door it works out nice so right now with the door open the bed lights that we just installed will also be on so those bed lights are on which means the tailgate lights are on and uh, that is as you guys can tell very very clear they're very bright very clean flush mount OEM install they look great now I'll be able to see all of the gear I'm loading in at night like I mentioned I'm a DJ all this gear the last three or four weddings where I bring just a small package that I can throw in the back of here every time I load up at night I'm like damn I need to put those bed lights, I need to install those bed lights. Like I said guys, the link to these bed lights, the OEM style ones on Amazon is in the description down below. Also instructions with the templates, all that is also listed in the description down below. As well as I'm going to include kind of some steps that I had to do and what all I needed to do those steps. This was definitely a hell of an undertaking compared to what I expected it to be. It is currently 8.30, I start on this at four o'clock. This took four and a half hours to actually install, which is a lot of time if you consider it. But if you guys don't make the mistakes I did and you actually uh, just solder all the connections from the get-go, you probably can get done about three, three and a half. I really like how it turned out. Uh, like I said, it, you can actually do it even quicker if you don't cut all of that extra wiring out. There was at least 12 feet of extra wiring that I had to like cut out to make every run like the exact distance if you guys like this video be sure to give it a big thumbs up if you are not already subscribed to see all the modifications we're gonna be doing be sure to click that subscribe button. so uh like the channel saying is now taco rick out peace